Good evening. Here you are, and welcome to the Tessa Marie Show. I am Tessa Marie. Tonight on the show, we are going to feature the pillar of emotional prosperity. Every Monday, we will be having the same pillar. Each pillar has its own day, and tonight is the pillar of emotional prosperity. Emotional prosperity is one of the pillars that is usually overlooked. We don't look at it as if it's anything as strong, for example, as financial or spiritual, mental or physical. But emotional prosperity is your ability to look at the things that you receive. Emotional prosperity is how you react to what's going on in your life, what you heard, what you receive, what you understood. And this is what the pillar of emotional prosperity is all about. So when we are emotionally prosperous, we are balanced. We are able to take in the information we just heard or received and analyze it and act accordingly. Many times we turn around and we look at the pillar of emotional prosperity and we just turn around and say, oh, they're so emotional. But that's not enough. Emotional prosperity is the one that can really alter your life. All the pillars are important in their own unique way. Each pillar, like a family of five, is unique. But each family has a special thing that puts them and binds the family together. We often use the fingers of one hand when we talk about the pillars of prosperity. If one finger is hurt, damaged, broken or cut, the other four have to, has to compensate. And that is difficult. They're functioning in a situation they're not accustomed to. So the middle finger cannot replicate the index. It cannot replicate the thumb or the tiny finger. Each one of them has their place in the tree of the family, the five fingers, the five prosperity pillars. So emotional prosperity is when we look around and we're given information and we react. I usually and often draw the analogy of a road rage that is emotion prosperity going the other way. I also talk about putting your emotions in the things that you want to acquire, in the things you, you desire. Put your emotions in the things you want to succeed at. Put your, in your information in being the best at what you can do. So this is what the pillar of emotional prosperity is all about. Like everything in life, each of these pillars has a positive and a negative side. The thing is, we let the negative side run away with us and make the choices for us. So tonight, I want to draw on you. I want to let you understand. I want to teach you how these pillars affect you. And I want you to know exactly what you must do to keep these pillars intact. I know for sure that if the pillar of emotional prosperity is left on its own, it can have devastating results. Sometimes we are at work and a supervisor, a manager, a director, somebody above us. There is always somebody above us. Whether it's the board of directors, they seem to have in being in charge of us. And if the pipe line comes down and that emotion comes to you and it says to you you are not doing well you're failing you're not performing you're late you're angry then all of a sudden boom your pillar of prosperity kicks in your pillar of emotional prosperity kicks in and your reaction is at the moment to stop and realize what they're saying but sometimes when we are in this position we do not stop we answer back we come barreling in, we are vicious, we get angry, and this is what we do. Because suddenly the pillar of emotional prosperity is taking over, but not in a good way. Yet, there are times that the pillar of emotional prosperity can really work in our favor. That is the time you look at what's happening, you step back, you analyze the situation, and you say, you know what? I am going to react in this situation differently. This is what the pillar of emotional prosperity is all about. 
you turn back, you retreat, you pull yourself back, and you say, you know what, it's not the right time. It's certainly not the right time to behave that way. So this is why the pillar of emotional prosperity is important. It is actually gives you a choice just as you read the, read the crossword. The crossword to go left or right. The crossword for the pillar of prosperity for you to decide, should I turn right and blow a gasket or should I turn left and retreat? But sometimes we blow the casket. When we blow, have you ever seen when the casket is blown in the car, everything goes everywhere. And that's how we react when we take on the pillar of prosperity in the negative, of emotional prosperity in the negative way. All the pillars are important. All the five pillars of prosperity are important. But tonight is the pillar of emotional prosperity. That one will cause us to lose a job, to lose an opportunity, to break up a marriage, to break up a relationship, to break up a friendship, to cause anger with a friend or family, if we do not know how to handle it. You will hear people often say, my emotions are just way out of whack. That usually is a signal. When you see them coming, you have a choice. You duck, you run, you ignore them, you quickly disappear from the environment. That tells you they're going to let you have it. The least provocation is going to fly right off the handle with them. So this is what that pillar can do. But on the other hand, the sweet part of the pillar of emotional prosperity comes when you use it to garner what you want, to push forward and pull on what you want. You often hear me talk about when you're planning your desires and your goal, that you should dig deep. You should go in and put your emotions into it. Put that same amount of emotion you feel like cutting your friend's head right off their neck and put that emotion into getting what you want, what you desire. Stand on it, demand it, nurse it, encourage it and say, you know what? I desire this fulfilled life. I desire $10 million and I'm going to have my $10 million. But say it like you mean it. Say it like you know for sure that you believe you can do this. You don't have to ask the how. I said something to a very, very sweet and dear friend of mine today. I, I spoke about doing more. And, and the first thing he said to me was how? And I said, your how is not your business. You just have to do it. So when you're facing an emotional crisis, remember to dig deep. Dig deep and say, I am going to get this. I want it. I can taste it. I desire it. When I think of it, my heart is pumping. When I think of it, I can feel the blood flowing from my toes up to my head and back down again and everywhere in between. When I feel this thing, when I think about this desire of mine, when I, I the emotion, the, the emotional prosperity is amazing. When you channel, channel it, when you pull it into you and you say, I've got this. When you say those words, I've got this. You need to say it with power and put your emotions into it. Because you see, so often we take that same emotion and we use it in a negative way. I will get you. I will come after you. I'm going to make sure you never... You know how many times I would have lost my job at the bank when these people said to me, I'm going to have your job. And I'm thinking, you want it, you can have it. You think it's so nice, you can take it anytime. And they threaten you. And you can see the venom coming out of them just because you did not break the rule to suit them. And the anger and the emotion is what They get out the door, they slam the door. Sometimes it hits them right on the back of the hill as they're going out. But the point of it is, there's two ways to channel emotion. Your, your director, your supervisor says to you, it's not good. That is not the time to send them to that place in a handbasket. That is not the time to tell them where to go and give them all the directions to get there. That is the time to sit back and listen. Not because you're being timid and shy, but because you know this is not the right time. There's an old saying that 
revenge is a dish best served cold. You don't have to be revengeful. You just have to wait your time. You have to choose and retreat. The thing about emotion going haywire is knowing today, I am not going to respond to you. I'll come back. I'm going to give you the white flag. I'm going to come back and I'll be prepared. I'll be calm. And you have already forgotten all the horrible things you said to me. By then I will come and you will be so surprised to see my behavior. So sometimes with your emotion, you must treat it with kindness. Give that person that's making your life a living hell some love and kindness. But the two of you tugging at the moment and fighting and pushing and saying I'm right and I'm wrong and is getting nowhere. It just wrecks the emotion. It just puts you, and if you are the one that is not in charge of that knife, guess what? You're going to get cut. You're going to get stabbed. You're going to get jabbed. So you have to choose when to use your emotion with force. I like putting my energy in my emotion, in loving, in caring, in feeling joy, in being thankful, in being grateful, in being happy, in being appreciative. And I'll say, you know what? I really appreciate you. Put your emotion in a note to a friend, someone who's always been there for you, someone who never says no. Put your emotion in saying, hi, how are you doing today? How are you feeling today? Put a little note in the mail and say, you know, I was thinking of you. And I just want you to know how far much I value your friendship, how much I value your wisdom, how much I value be you being there when no one else has stepped up. Put your, in, your emotion in telling somebody, I truly and really appreciate everything you have done for me today. So do not let your pillar of emotional prosperity be weakened by the attitudes of others. When that pillar is weakened, guess who is going to pick up the slack amongst the five pillars? Everybody has to work harder. It's a team effort here. So if the pillar of emotional prosperity is having a bad day, guess what? Mental prosperity has gone to the dogs. Physical prosperity has gone to the donut shop. Financial prosperity is dropped in at the liquor store. And spiritual prosperity is sitting at a corner wondering when the world is going to end. None of them are doing their job. None of the pillars of prosperity are functioning because you know why? A member of the team has gone cuckoo. A member of the team is not being its best. A member of the team has fallen. A member of the team has to dig out from a mess. A member of the team is trying to, to thread words that shouldn't have been threaded out to put it back into the needle and hoping we can seal those lips that let them go so wild. When the pillar of prosperity is in trouble, every one of the other pillars are weak. The emotional is weak, they're all weak. These prosperity pillars are like, you know, the cog in, in, the, in, the, in the willing system. Each cog has its place. But one cannot work if one is chipped. And that's what the pillars of prosperity represent. So to on Monday night, we will always, always come in and pull the pillar of emotional prosperity. That is the night when you can think about it. And if you have something you want to say, DM me and we will get it going on the Facebook group. Because that's where I'm going to expand a little bit more. And that's where I'm going to teach you a little bit more about those pillars and the, the strength of them, the beauty of having them aligned, the beauty of having your desires and your goal aligned. Because the pillar of prosperity takes you. They're not important more than the other. All five are the same. They have the same weight. But when one is sick, it's like a team. All the others need to step, step up. And when they're stepping up, they're, they're less conscious of what they're supposed to do. They're having a hard time. So make sure when you're facing emotional weakness, remember you have four other parts that's going to suffer. As I said, mental runs to the donut shop. 
Physical decides I'm just going to ignore my exercise program today. Spiritual said, well, obviously there's no spiritual guidance for me. And you just know financial is going to take a, a big, I'm going, I deserve this. I deserve a brand new car. I cannot afford it. But right now, after the way my supervisor spoke to me, I need a brand new car. Really? And that is what happens. So emotional is the way you react to the information you have just received. Your emotion is what controls your reaction. So you get bad news, you're going to fly out the handle, maybe. Or if it's really really tuned and you're in the moment and you're really balanced, you say, no, not today. You're not taking me down this rabbit hole. Been there, done that. There is no exit at the back of this rabbit hole. So you are on your own. I'm going to sit at the top of the hole and wait for you to come back. All frustrating. When you are calm and collected, we will have a discussion. That's what emotional prosperity is like. You choose your battle. You choose when to step. And there are times, as I said, retreating does not mean you have failed. Waiting until karma heads prevailed does not mean you have given up or that that person has taken charge and is better than you. No, it's not a war. It's a matter of managing your life for success. It's a matter of being financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically prosperous. All the five pillars being prosperous. That is what enables you to live a fulfilled life. And this is what I do. This is what I teach. This is what I, I give you. This is the information you will get here at the testimony show every night, five nights a week, Monday to Friday. You need more? Then you get more. But when you come to the testimony show at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you come so that you have the information to enable you to live a fulfilled life. A fulfilled life is a life where you have your desires, a home of your own, a second home in the country, a, a, a villa in the south of France, a, a, a condo somewhere where it's warm, a life on the beach. That's what it is, a fulfilled life. Driving the car of your choice, going on several vacations in one year and being debt free. I know the secret. I know how, and there is a secret to attaining this. I've done it, and this is why I can teach it. I am not coming from a textbook. I am coming from actually having done it. I know the game. I know where the secret, and I know the, all the information about the secret. I've got a formula, and I can give you that formula. What you need to do is visit me every night, Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Canada, Toronto. Come join me on this journey and I'll teach you how. Your job is not to know how. When you come to me, I have the secret. There is a secret to attaining this and I have the answer. And when you come to see me, you will get the answer, but you must show up in order to get that answer. And if what you desire, you look at it and you say, I am no, I don't think so. I am here to tell you, yes, you can. Yes, you, I think so. Yes, I know so. Because I have the secret and I have the formula. I know exactly what to put together to make sure that you win to make sure that you live that fulfilled life. A life where you can have all your desires met. A life when you get it, there's going to be someone that's going to look at you and say, how did you do this? And you will say, you know what? The how was not my responsibility. Tessa Marie knew the how and she showed me. I only knew why I desired this and what I desired. Did you hear me? 
I have the secret of the how. The only thing, the simple thing I ask from you is why. Why do you desire this and what it is you desire? Be clear and be specific. And at the testimony show, you will learn how. Because I know the secret and the formula of how. So Monday night is the night to be here to get your emotions in check. And if you are not sure that your emotions in check, listen to this live again. See how you react the last time. The information you were given wasn't suiting you. That wasn't what you expected to hear. Remember how you react when somebody pushed you in the subway station or when somebody cut you off or when somebody tried to get ahead of you at the supermarket, how was your reaction? When the cashier made a mistake, how did you behave? Very simple things, but you know what? You pile them all one on top of the other and they affect your future. They first affect your present moment and the actions you take in the present moment determines the life you live tomorrow. And for this reason, and this reason alone, you should check in on Monday if you realize your emotional prosperity is weak. If you realize your emotional prosperity is not at its best, this is what you have to do. This is when you need to say, uh -uh, I need to step up. I need to fix this. I need to correct this behavior. It's not serving me. It's making me feel worse. I am feeling worse now than I felt 20 minutes ago. So this is one of the reasons I'm asking you to pay attention to all your pillars. Make sure that each and every one of them is functioning in the right way. Take a check, knock on them, shake them up. Say, where are you going? And make sure you understand that pillar of emotional prosperity. It's not the big things that crack. It's the little things that all the little things crack and then all of a sudden you have a bust. It's not the tiny little cracks here and you say, oh, that was just a, a little blow up with my brother. Then the next day is a big blow up with my aunt. The next day I really blow up with my child. Then I really blow up with my significant other. And all these little blow ups come together and they end up being a big, big, fat, heavy blow up. Where do you want this to go? Where do you want it to lead? You want it stopped. You want it stopped right there at that little tiny blow up. And that is what you have to do. So remember to stay functioning, stay on top. Remember when you react to these negative emotional situation, you need to pull back and say, uh-uh, I'm not taking you on, not today. So this is all I'm asking of you right now, to stay tuned each night. Tomorrow night will be a different pillar. When we have gone through this entire week, you will know them. I expect to see them in you, see you coming and listening to them, taking information from them and marching forward to that successful, fulfilled life. Again, it's the life where you have choices is the life where you have all the material possessions you, be, you want, you desire. The life where you drive the material, the car of your choice, whatever the, that expensive luxury car could be. It's up to you. The dream is your vision and your version of the dream and your version of this vision belongs to you, not to anyone else. So keep your emotion in check as one of the pillars then make sure all your pillars are aligned with your desires. And I promise you success because I have the secret. There is a secret, you know, and I got the secret. I got the secret a long time ago and I have it for you. I will hand it to you, but you must come to look for it. So sending you light and joy on this absolutely amazing and wonderful